second match of the day here at the start of phase two. RNG taking on LP, Kylin versus Trunks. And this should be a good one. Uh, Kylin has twice managed to make me criticize his plays and twice. Well, one of those times he was definitely right, and the other time I had no right to criticize. So apologies to Kylin. It's not some sort of vendetta. In fact, I enjoy watching him play. I think the team of Lise and Lee and Kylin is an incredibly strong one. Definitely able to go all the way here, but I do like to call it as I see it. Um, otherwise, it would make for a pretty awful broadcast. We do have to just accept that if I'm going to call it how I see it, while solo casting with nobody to steer me correct if I make some silly comment, that occasionally I'm just going to get it wrong. But I'm willing to admit that. Uh, but I do think it's for the good of the broadcast that I say it as I see it, as I'm right a decent percentage of the time. Okay, so Trunks on the other hand playing for LP alongside X-Hope, Omega Zero and VVB. I was a little concerned when I saw this team that maybe they were a bit past it. You know, we haven't seen these players for some time. Um, but I was extremely impressed with Trunks first time out when we saw him three weeks ago. And I, I will admit, I think that of this team, especially of the the three that we've seen a lot of, we haven't seen so much of VVV except in WESG. Um, I felt that Trunks used to be the weakest player. But this time around, I just think he's got Hearthstone really worked out. And I think that he might be one of the best players now. And Kylin remains to be seen. He's doing fine. He's on a very good team. I worry a little bit about his nervous disposition, but that will go with time. It always does. Uh, we've seen plenty of players who are nervous do extremely well in the long run. Hunter Ace being one of them. And he still gets nervous. Yeah. Trunks just doing the druid things. Big minion here though for Kylin as a result of that ingenuity. So Yeah. That's better. See that's the sort of reaction that we all have, Kylin. Yes. You're getting druided, it's called. And at this point you're supposed to nod sarcastically. Absolutely one hundred percent dead right for effort there. I think that that is how we all feel every time that happens. Druid has been one of the talking points of the meta, really, especially at this point when Kael'thas was still a thing, the deck has a grim win rate at top level play against other good decks. That much is certain, although Trunks has chosen to ban Kylin's out, so he obviously likes the deck. But you do have to bring four decks, and it's very hard to judge how good the Druid is, as Kylin gives another nod. And it's hard to judge how good it is because sometimes it does this and just destroys your opponent. And sometimes it doesn't draw its card draw or its ramp. And you just get a handful of Soul of the Forests and Innovates and you know, Kel'thas just sitting there where you're on four mana and he costs seven and nothing happens and you lose. And if you're a top level player, you'll play a lot of Hearthstone, but you can't test every deck 500 times in the short time it, that a meta exists. So at some point you have to go on experience. Some people trust the stats. The stats aren't wrong but they can often be jaded by bad players or people playing ladder aren't always paying attention. That's a big deal. Uh, stats also can be quite misleading if you don't apply them correctly. Certainly a flaw that some people have. So a lot of it is based on your gut feeling and if if you have a lot of games like this, your gut feeling is, wow, this, this deck's really good. And if you don't, you have a gut feeling that the deck's not so good. So gathering the day to see what happens. Rottenest Drake going to clear up the board, by the way, here for Kylin. And despite Trunks' great start, Kylin is in a reasonable spot. But now it's go time. Kael'thas into lots of silliness, I suspect, will happen here. And it's on Trunks now to go, 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 and make the magic happen. 
This takes some practice, by the way. The Kael'thas turns. Like, it looks easy, especially when someone like Trunks is at their helm, doing it well. But you have animations to navigate, and you can get yourself tangled up. You need to know which spells you're targeting with your Kael'thas. You know, do you do you want to keep going? Do you want to put the brakes on at any point? You know, do you want to cast the most expensive spell here, for instance, which is Glowfly Swarm? Well, probably not. You want to get the Soul of the Forest. But do you care that much? If you're going to do it, you're on your last run. You've got a Moonfire or two Moonfires and a Power of the Wild available to you. Do you really want to waste your Moonfires here? Is this your winning push? And again, I'm not saying all these questions are always really hard to answer. But you do have to navigate it quite well with time. And talking of time, Trunks is out of it. And we'll have to wait and see whether he got that Solar Forest off or not. It looked like he didn't, but he did at least get to hover over it. So maybe he did. He did indeed. Kylin now has Zephyrus for Master Spell or Shadow World Horror, depending what the plan is. What else can he do with this? Well, he's not dead to... Is he dead to 5 2, two plus Savage Roll? That's only 20 something. Makes you wonder, actually, if. Trunks should have played the buff at the end. Because his reload would be these two twos. Which Power of the Wild would now make into three threes, obviously. That's a big difference, whereas he already had a board full of nonsense that was only going to be dealt with with something like this. Probably exactly this. He didn't need to play the Power of the Wild to get another spell off. Kelthas, so maybe an error there. Big wide board. I'm trying to work out how Unleash fits into this next equation. I think you unleash some down and then you face with some others down and then you win the game because the Druid doesn't have anything left. That's if there's no lethal available. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 2 is 11. Can you get 9 more? You can get 3 from the weapon. Probably no lethal there. Though. Kylan can deal with a lot of the board. Just trying to work out whether to trade or face this. <laughs> I'm trying to work it out too, and I'm not quite sure. Maybe it doesn't matter much. You're not dying to it, and you're not killing them with your attack, so let them make the trade, I guess. But that does allow this, actually. Yeah, so definitely should have traded there. There's no your three fours under threat. But tiny, tiny, tiny margins. Maybe he feels that he's run out of resources, so he needs the two points to face. There comes the faces player I was talking about. And Trunks really struggling. He needs to pick up maybe a Fungal Fortunes to get another Glowfly Swarm off. That would really have helped. And now do you Glowfly for two? Or do you wait one more turn and hope to pick up something that will let you go through. He'll know his deck composition. I think there's a Glowfly and I think, um, a Fungal and I think there's an Overflow. In which case maybe you can push it one more turn. If you push it one more turn, you basically do nothing this turn. That brings into the equation a chance to Savage Roar just so that your face can take out one of the four twos to protect a minion. But then do you think you ever get lethal? 
This is a really hard turn because he definitely hasn't lost from where he's sat. Yeah, and he still doesn't know whether to Savage Raw or not because I don't think he wins in the game next turn. I think you have to Savage Raw here. It's horrible. Rather him than me. Yeah, I like this. I do like this. But you don't miss all of the damage. And you've still got lethal set up. I think this is really good Hearthstone. And really counterintuitive. So, Kylin now can absolutely math this out. Probably needs to kill two minions. There's enough. We've seen both Moonfires. But let's go with there's a good chance of Druid picking up damage. Well, that might not be correct. Again, he will know better than me. And yeah, he's having a look. I think that's just definitely the picture of a man counting a deck list there. It matters because if you want to leave up three, three, threes plus a hero power, 11 might actually be an okay health total. It doesn't sound like an okay health total, but it might be better than it's than you think. See what he chooses to do. This to me looks like he's going to take down two minions, which is the option that makes you feel safest. He's taking down three, so presumably another savage roar left. And it's dragon time. Mount Cello with no spells, but it is a 5-8. Do you just play it? I think you probably do. Do you want to even kill the Zigzor here? Or do you want to make sure they don't have a chance of drawing the Prime? This is the last turn of the game, one way or another. Well, the latest this game will go is Trunks' next turn, isn't it? Could welcome just down to how does Alex Straza feel today? Is this correct? If he draws Zigzor Prime now, will he just regret that? No, it's actually fine, isn't it? Okay. So it's Alex Straza time. There are some outs here that are quite good. One of which is Alex Straza's own face. Uh, to time it not good enough, so you have to whelp and see what you draw. Maybe you can draw something that does some damage. Kill command. That does some damage, but is it enough? Is there a world where you have three mana? No, that world doesn't exist, so well done me. So Twin Tyrant just can't kill enough minions, and Trunks is going to get this done. Doesn't look like there's any combination of stuff that can work it out. Kind of using his time because it's you don't why concede if you're not you know until you've checked everything three times. But can't see anything here, nor can he. So he plays it down just in case again he's missed something crazy or whatever, and now he will give it up. Trunks takes a one-zero lead, much needed for LP. So, Trunks with the Druid. But now Kylin is left with the two best classes in Hearthstone. Cues up the Warrior, and this is super favoured for the Warrior. Again, a reminder if you're watching this soon after publication, these matches took place a few weeks ago before a Druid contained the Dragons, and Warrior was just starting to become pretty powerful. Sorry, in this matchup, Warrior's always been pretty powerful. It was just starting to get the meaty lists, but this isn't a meaty list. This is just an egg list, as far as I understand it. And Teron looking at me there, saying, well, of course it's an egg list. There's a Teron in the deck. Of course, their cash is a big deal here. The rest is all up for debate. 
And it has been the Warrior play where I've criticised Kylie and it's turned out he's better than me at Warrior. Who knew? So let's see where he goes with it this time. And already the decisions. You probably don't skip her because your opponent might glow fly you. But you really want to, but you can't because it's turn three or four even until you get the, the rampage down. Trunks on the other hand. With a really good looking starting hand. Again, interesting what he does. Corsair Cash would be my play here. I think you want those big 3 3 weapons. But it is quite slow. But you do nothing this turn, and then next turn you do nothing again apart from 3 damage. And if Druid has started to get mana by that time, you're just in trouble. And with that in mind, I understand this play. Hey Fungal, how are you doing today? How are you feeling fortunate? Feeling fortunate not to get nerfed maybe. Alright, handful of everything, but no ramp. Which of course just doesn't happen now, it plays wild growth and breath. But at the moment, no overgrowth available. Unless I'm totally getting the pictures wrong. Luckily for me, the only one that it looks a bit like is Ironbark, and they cost different amounts, so even I can work that one out. And Trunks, this is the other side of Druid that I was talking about, when it doesn't do the thing that we saw last game. What is this mess? She's got a collection of absolute rubbish. So we are getting to see both sides of Druid. And you're going to get to see how good a Warrior can be in a minute as well. Kylin has set up Rampages and such like. Don't think he's going to combo. I think next turn he may just skip a play down a lackey. He'll have another one by then to decide which one to play. And just rampage the armorsmith and start rampaging into some face. He might not do that, though, now I've looked at it. So we might just see the War Mall Challenger and this lackey played. Because he's going to need to keep the skipper for a fungal fortunes. A fungal fortunes? I'm going crazy, man. For a Glowfly Swarm, which isn't in hand. Talking to yourself for hours on end. What could go wrong? I'm enjoying it though. This tournament has been full of excitement so far. And largely good play, I think. There are little some fears that the way the Team League is set up means it's quite hard to get in there if you're not on a team. I used to have to convince somebody to sign you by being good. And there were fears, I think, maybe of a little complacency setting in, but I haven't seen any evidence really of that so far. So Trunks cycling the wrath. He's got time. Hasn't got a lot of it because Warrior closes in on you pretty quick. He's got a little time and picks up the Glowfly Swarm for his trouble. Which means that next turn he is going to be able to play a massive board. Just find this out as a 3-2 presumably to make a little bit of space in his hand. His hand being that bad. Nice pick up this for Kylin. Does mean that he can just Play the Inner Age and Rampage up. You can just Corsair Cash trade in as well, but he's not getting the damage done quickly that way. But he does have the advantage that he keeps back a mercenary combo, potentially with the Corcoran Elite. Corcoran Elite, Mercenaries, Inner Age, Rampage is what, 18 damage? Always worth bearing in mind that's available, but you don't want to overestimate it.
If he goes to the other option, it's just thin your deck down, which is relevant as well. Oh, he split the difference, okay. Yeah, it did look a little bit slow the other way. This is nice. Developing everything makes sense. Next turn, looking to get a lot of damage in. Well, there's no point playing that wild growth because it just goes into the overflow, and the overflow right now is no use to you unless you want to just dump all the moon fires and things. But then what you're trying to draw, you're trying to draw Kael'thas after you've got no moon fires? No. So it looks to me like Glowfly Swarm is the deal, but you know there's a good chance there's a risky skipper because your opponent has just attacked you with an anchor. As it happens, that was already in hand, but you know there's a good chance. So he's choosing to not play the, the Glowflies. But now he's just getting into a hole. Because once again now he's got to dump mana. Now he's dumping the wild growth. I mean it does advance him. So should he pick up Kalthas? I guess he's okay. This is what I was talking about a minute ago though. It's I guess Kalthas into coin. Crystal, Overflow, something like that. But it needs to be quick. He's just eating up the damage now. Kylie's got him down to seven and no help at all in sight here for Trunks. Yeah, and just way too late. Doesn't look like there's anything that makes sense he can do here. Now, I think the Glowfly Swarm last turn and I hope your opponent missed on both swings of the anchor to get his risky skippers. Maybe was a possibility. Kylin holding his breath, but he's going to be happy with what he sees. This is just an opponent in desperation. Can Kylian finish it off now? He's got 10 available for absolute sure. 11 if you count the lackey. There's usually a way to get this done, but if he doesn't, it can still all go wrong, I guess. Huh. Game gets back on. As somehow this isn't over. <laughs> and not only that, but there isn't much good he can do. Let's have a look at Trunks' deck list. I think that we've seen most of it already. One Mount Cellar in the deck. Which seems bizarre now, but yeah, in the past one Mount Cellar was plenty. And obviously it's going to be pretty crazy if it can get picked up. But it might not be able to be played. It'll be overdrawn if it's the top card. So maybe you just play the Brute down here if you're Kylin. It's just the biggest thing you have available to win the game next turn. And you probably don't swing with a weapon with that in mind either. Because you want to trade into a potential taunted up something next turn. Okay, talking of taunted up some things, I'll tell you who's going to be taunted up. It's going to be this person here, Kael'thas. Alright. Guess the Glowfly Swarm. Can have one more big spell. Which would be the soul of the forest, I imagine. And 15. Well, Kylian has 15 available to him, but can he get through a 510? He's got a lot of cards that help him get through a 510, but as it stands, he can't. But also, there are some worlds where he draws, say, an armor smith, and Clears up this board, I think he can clear off four things because he's got double skipper. Yeah, he can. 
and says, well, you've got a Kael'thas. I've got a million health, maybe a million and one, something like that. You cannot finish this. I think that's where we're going to be at. Like, he can't clear the whole board. Well, he actually can. I think he will. Also, the 612. And that's what he does with the tail on the egg after. He also needs to be sure, and he's doing that fine, to make sure there's board space. So he's now planning how he wants this turn to look at the end. He's going to kill off everything that matters. There's going to be one or two bits and pieces probably left over, but the trades will deal with at least most of that. Kylin just planning out eggs and turns and rush lackeys and such like. There we go. Everything blown up. Does he get rid of the last tree? He does. And he leaves himself with a fantastic board. And 52 health, and his opponents used almost all of his good stuff. Not quite over. But what would you need here? You've, you've seen both iron barks, so actually it probably is over. Only one spell available for trunks for the mount seller. So even if he gets a griffin, he's still facing down eight. I guess that's not over. So that's what you have to do. Mount seller, roll griffin. Trade into 6-3. Hope your warrior opponent draws no cards. But this was a hideous draw for Trunks. This doesn't tell us anything really. Again, Druid games don't tell you much individually. That's not what he was looking for. He could have done with a Yasira a few turns ago. Gives it up, goes to one apiece. And Kylin still has Warrior and Demon Hunter. Trunks with a rogue and the demon hunter of his own. But the odd one out there is the warrior versus the rogue. Don't want to be in that spot. Okay, well this is a big favour for the warrior. I believe this is a stealth rogue. Yeah, there we go, there's some confirmation. And not the best of hands for Kyle. I'm interested to see how he navigates this one. Trunks with the Edwin. And these are the games when I played a lot of Warrior that sent me loopy. And your opponent just Edwins you for eight. You've got no way of getting rid of it and they just hit you. And all their other stuff swirls around and just generally irritates you. Ugh. No. So Kylin, going to get some stuff to deal with potential rubbish, because Rogue just churns out rubbish. And this, this version of Rogue churns out more dangerous rubbish, like smaller rubbish, but more of it. It keeps the cards coming. It gets to Galakond quicker, because it draws more of its stuff. And a fully invoked Galakond in this matchup is how the rogue wins. Togwaggle is another way, and a big Edwin is another way. Sounds like a lot of ways, but sometimes you have to string them together. And how the warrior wins is it can get control of the board and hits you with its own, you know, I'm calling rogue things rubbish here. That's pretty insulting to Valera and her crew. But warrior, despite the fact its cards do a lot, can end up with its own absolute rubbish as well, let's face it. 1-2 Risky Skippers and 3-3 three, three Armorsmiths and goodness knows what else just piling in. And the Warrior does have to get the board at some point. It can't do it all with combos and weapon swings. It can do a lot of it, but if it doesn't get the board, it, it can't get all of the damage in. It has to just pass. And to his last weapon charge as well. So, this isn't like Hunter, where back in the day, 
when you're trying not to use up your eagle horn bow because you've still got secrets left so you shouldn't make this first swing because you don't want to make the second with warrior you make the first swing because there's so many weapons in your deck you want to be able to use your last swing and re-equip at any point uh, even if you haven't got it there's there's two corsairs there's two more weapons in the deck you you just wait for that to happen every turn and it just comes so you, you don't want to be left with a handful of weapons so you do use other swings is what I'm saying if you're wondering why Kylie wastes a swing to the face so Trunk's trying to work out how he gets a massive Edwin next turn there's also the option to have a massive Edwin this turn which he might be getting very tempted by I think I would be, you going to backstab your own thing as well, I think you do you just make super Edwin here, yeah just do it, just go quickly Make Super Edwin, backstab a thing. Kylie knows what's coming the second he sees a shadow step. I'm talking quickly because Trunk has um, no time. And here comes Super Edwin and Kylin has probably just lost this game of Hearthstone. 14. So Kylin's plan is to kill that over two turns. Can he kill it in one turn? Probably not. How do you want to go about it? Whiskey Skipper into hurting something, into Brute, into Rampage, into Copy It with Mercenaries is where he wants to be. However, he has five mana and what I just said costs like 200 mana. Which is not an equation that is on his side. Let's see if we can work out how to do this over two turns. can get that brute down to very very cheap levels I think you start off by swinging into a 1-1 one, one, or a face actually no, you just, okay, it's taking too long now I think you try and get a second skipper and then this turn put a brute into the Edwin and then next turn put the core couldn't the enemy, but because he spent so long thinking about it, and I'm sure that's where he was going, whether it's possible or not, who knows. Um, he's had to do it the other way around, but that's what he's looking at now, and he gets the second skipper. So the plan is to skipper Sky Raider, get a zero mana or one mana brute, especially if Trunks loads up the board. He can then buff up the brute. He won't have the mana left, even if it costs zero. He won't have the mana to copy it. He would need one more. But he should be able to clear up the Edwin. And there's a chance that by doing that, uh, at least he gets into the game. Like, then you can draw an armor smith and then get safe that way, maybe. That's the stuff he's looking at. But rule number one here, just stay alive. And great play by Trunks. Did you see that? This is how well this man's playing. Those injured minions that were going to make this brute really cheap. And don't forget, there could be two brutes, which would have been a massive deal. Just got rid of them. But the ambush was unfortunate, obviously. And maybe even... Did he play the ambush last turn? I think he did. But the rest of the turn just showed full understanding of the situation, how he loses the game. And it mattered. Like, if there'd been one more injured minion on the board... And I guess it's a 1-1, one -one, maybe not. Maybe I'm... over-complimenting here. Yeah, maybe it wasn't needed. Anyway, there isn't another brute. There's only this one. It does get rid of the Edwin. And done all he can, but dagger plus a thing plus a viscerate is going to be lethal. 
Trunks gets a 2-1 lead and winning with Rogue against Warrior is a huge thing for Trunks. LP looking to begin their march back to 50%. Trunks is already on 50%. He went 1-1 one one back in week 1. And now he gets to play against the Demon Hunter, which isn't quite as bad as the Warrior matchup for this Rogue. Spy Mistress is big, big in this in this match. And the fact that the deck is just fundamentally a little bit cheaper and cycles a little bit better is all good. Spy Mistress, you just have to play something into it and get it over with. But look at next turn, how ridiculous things are going to get here. It's okay. Oh. That's super tempting to just eviscerate this and move on. Also the option to just dagger it and do that twice and then next turn you've got the one drop into eviscerate and you've still got your dagger up and you've still got your spy mistress. You take a little bit of damage but you do kind of get the board. And he needs a board because next turn Kylan's going to go coin into Setia, into Twin Slice, into Hit You, into making a 2 2. And I think this is super. Going back to how Trump's played that other turn, it did mean that Kylan had to use a skipper by removing all those injured minions. Well, Kylin does have the opportunity to do this twice, and I think that's why you do it. The first one's going to be a bit of a fail because of how Trunks has played the first two turns. But then the second turn, you just do it again. Another Overseer, another Slice. And the second one should stick. Like the Rogue's irritating, but it's not an actual complete monster. It shouldn't be able to clear two lots of Satya nonsenses. Like, Kylian understands that this first lot is probably getting tidied up just by yeah, what he can see. So start off by seeing what your lackey is. If you get a goblin lackey, that's lovely. Cobalt lackey might be lovely later, but it's not particularly useful here. And now just decide how many things you want to kill. Do you want to keep up a dagger charge? Well, no, you want to take down the fiend. You probably want to eviscerate the 4-2. Do you leave the 2-2 up? Do you trade into it? What are you expecting to see next time? Hasn't got much of a turn next turn, so you can go through his list. I think you keep this back. If you draw a Greyheart Sage, you're going to be pretty disappointed for the sake of two. It's only a 1 in 12 chance, but I think you can wait. There might be more important things to kill next turn. Especially if your opponent chose to do this with a coin. They probably have another 3 drop. Yep. Trunks reads it. And he can kill most things here with his lackey and whatever he picks up a lot of the time. And he's giving Kylin quite the headache here. So what's Kylin's turn for if he does nothing here? And this is the problem. You can see on the board your your thing's going to die, but you've got to trust your deck. This Demon Hunter deck doesn't have that many heavy minions and things to do in it. And one of those is the weapon, which is fine. So you've got to trust it. 
and assume that you're not just playing Battle Mage Hero Power next turn. If you are playing Battle Mage Hero Power next turn, you're probably losing this game of Hearthstone, but games of Hearthstone are there to be lost. Well, Flick, I was talking about the bad pickups for Kylin. Flick is an awful pickup here for Trunks. It might come in handy later, but there may not be a later if he's not careful. Next turn, at least he does have the Shield of Galakrond. And then Kronks. Probably want to keep the Shadow Step for Kronks. Trunks, you can't get to Flick. I guess he's got to decide whether he wants to tank one of these with a weapon over two turns. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. It is a lot of damage. Four extra. And Kylin takes advantage of that. Picks up a one drop. That's all he needed. You know, there were better pickups and stuff, but that's fine. He just wanted to get this sort of board. And now, even if he doesn't win with these minions, which looks like he probably will, the skull should get him there. Shield of Galakrond is the way forward here. This is where he maybe wishes he had tanked a uh, mage or something over two turns. Chaos Strike not the best either for Kylin. Oh, you wouldn't have minded those the other way around. That was kind of game if he picks up the Warglaves first. Wouldn't have had to have done much trading. Correctly trades the right minion in. I know, you know I make a fuss about these little things, but if he trades the wrong minion in there, then Flick gets a two for one. Oh, a little bit of health gain here. Yeah, Trunks likes to look at that. A little shift in the seat. He's going to try and make some more minions and then decide what to do about it. That's not the minion he's looking for. Now, does he want another card when he shadow steps now? Yeah. Or does he want another random two drop? What card are you looking for? And again, I just don't believe this is how Trunks used to be. Maybe I underrated him previously, but I think that he is much more thoughtful than he was in 2016, 2017. And why wouldn't he be? That's a long time ago. You know, he's allowed to have got a lot better. Well, he's still up against it here. Kylin Got the Warglaive's ability, take down the 3-3, three, three. Mm, take out a number of 1-1s, one which he knows and I don't. So you take out the Sage for sure, you do 4 to face for sure, put the opponent to 4, which sets up lethal for next turn. So you want to keep back 1 charge to make sure that you've got lethal set up for the turn after that. You may have reason to believe your opponent has Galakrond. Oddly enough, not because he just drew it, but going backwards, um, he could have had it as well as left hand cards. Had a couple of turns where Trunks really didn't do anything, implying a heavy hand. Yeah, so this is the bit I was. This is where I started wondering whether you kill off any of the 1 1s. And actually, I think you should. But Trunks gains five armor. Is that enough to help? This is enough to help. What is going on? He's on nine. Kylin could do four immediately. Just weapon hero power. I want to see Trunks put this one to face from the weapon as well. You're never trading into another minion, so these damages have got to go face. And you probably only win this game if you win next turn. Maybe the turn after. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17, 18, I can see for next turn. A 
It's 11 on the board, 5 from the crunks is 16, and 2 from the kobold, that's 18. But also the crunks can heal him for 5. But is this lethal? It's not. Kylan recognising that he's in trouble here. Just hunting for that lethal, doesn't find it. So Chaos Strike it will be. That looks like an I beam. So that takes away your opponent's lethal. This is where him keeping the extra charge of the weapon might come in handy. Right, trunks. What have you got? So part of this turn will have to be the crunks for five health gain, otherwise you're dead on board. But if you do that, you don't get to do much else. You can't get anything near lethal, you've got to make sure you've got lethal the turn after. So your choices are to hero power and just get yourself some more utility in the form of another lackey. Or to play the guaranteed one damage from the Skyviteer. Your opponent will be on 17, 10. I think I like the hero power. You might get a Titanic lackey or something if weird stuff happens. You don't get to use any of it this turn, of course. But he's always a Skyviteer, he thinks the one's important. See how that works out. Down to ten. Are there any break points? Let's say the six six is dealt with. Can't see any obvious break points. Thirteen at the moment for on the board. So I beam would remove one of those. And the two damage. Yeah. Maybe there wasn't much in it. Chance to draw another card is also irrelevant in the world where he gets altruist, but in that world I think he just loses the game anyway. So looking for lethal on the other side anyway, Kylie, as I'm rambling on studying Trunks' hand. He has seven available, but he doesn't have that available if he plays Skull. Play Skull, he needs to hit 5 damage. He needs to hit a 0 mana Slice and a 2 mana Adept. And I think that's not enough. I think that's short. Slice was victory. Trunks on the edge. Kyle needs to do something. And this is one over lethal and Trunks takes it down in a really hard forward match. One of the better matches I think of the entire event so far. And LP go to three and four, RNG go to four and three. Congratulations to Trunks. Very nice hearthstone indeed.